What's up? I want to welcome y'all to this podcast today. Uh, we got a very special guest, uh, Miss Christina Lee. Uh, Christina, why don't you tell us about yourself? My name's Christina, as you said. I am a realtor here in Indiana and very excited to be here today. Awesome, awesome. You excited about the podcast? Very. I know you said you're an introvert, so it's kind of <laughs> odd for you to be on the podcast, but I'm glad I was able to, you know, twist your arm and get you on. So I'm excited to have you on as a guest today. Well, thanks for asking me. What made you start a podcast? Uh, what made me start a podcast? Just so many people constantly inboxing me, asking me, hey, can I meet up? I want. I got questions about real estate, so I'm like, man, I can just put this information out there. Hopefully, you know, not necessarily slow down the questions, but just give everybody an opportunity to maybe ask some stuff, see some stuff on there that they be like, oh, this answer my question, this answer. And, you know, like they say, you know, the Bible says, you know, our people perish because of a lack of knowledge. So if I can get that knowledge out there, hopefully, you know, it'll help somebody out in the future. So, Well, you definitely have a lot of knowledge to give. Will it be primarily real estate focused? Uh, obviously, that's my uh, expertise, uh, but I'm going to give out you know, knowledge in different things, financing, uh, you know, anything that I think I'm, I got some knowledge to give, I'm going to share it. So that's what it's all about. Definitely. It's very generous of you. Yes, absolutely. It's better to give than receive. So <laughs> I, I give it and, you know, I know I'll get blessings in return. So I'm not afraid to get a knowledge out. How long have you been working in real estate? Uh, I've been doing real estate about 20, about 25 years. I purchased my first property, uh, when I was about 20 years old, I was I was in college, you know, taking a marketing class. My professor gave us a book on real estate. You know, I read it and, you know, asked him, hey, do you think it's a good idea for me to start? Start, You know, is it this easy? He said, yeah, you can do it. But, you know, here's my book. Read it. I read it. You know, literally six months later, I was out looking for my first property. So about tw over 25 years ago. It's a very inspiring story. Would you recommend the book? Uh, I would if I can remember what the book was. <laughs> <laughs> but that was nearly 25 years ago. But since then, I've read so many books. Um, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Um, actually, I recommend my book, The Bigger Picture. It's an excellent book uh, yeah. that you can you can get. It'll give a lot of knowledge on, you know, just starting a side hustle. So, yeah, it's a definitely a lot of, lot of books out there. I am glad you mentioned that I have read your book. Okay. What you, what you think about it? It's incredible. Okay. All it's right. incredible. Okay. It's definitely one that, that people should pick up. Okay. Where can they get it at? Uh, you can pick it up on Amazon. Uh, you can um, most, most definitely Amazon. Uh, you can get hard okay. copies, digital copies. Um, even if you call me, inbox me. I'll even give hand deliver a copy. Sign? By any means necessary. Sign copy. <laughs> I'll okay. get you a book. So definitely. Okay, sounds good. Awesome, awesome. So tell me a little bit about what you do. Um, why, you know, why why did you choose real estate? What, you know, what excited you about real estate? You know, the honest truth is that I got into real estate to make money, um, which has not ever been my primary focus. And, and, I, and I'm going I'm to cut you off. I always suggest people never start anything to make money because... Mm -hmm. That will never keep you going because once you're not making no money, mm -hmm. you go stop doing it. So I advise yeah. people don't do nothing for the money. You got to have passion for it. You got to have because it's going to be days where you don't. It's going to be a lot of days, especially when you start something new. You're not going to be making no money. So it's go. If that was your motivation, you're no longer motivated. You're going to be out. You are a so. thousand percent accurate. And so. The, the short story is I was, you know, looking to transition in my career. Someone said something about real estate being, you know, an easy way to make money. And it was like, you know what, let me get into real estate and then I'll figure out what I, else I want to do from there. And the very first person I helped was my sister. And of course, I was very protective over her and advocated strongly for her. And, and um, once that transaction was over, I decided I wanted to treat everyone like family and absolutely fell in love with real estate and helping people and seeing houses and really every aspect about it. There's no part of this that um, I don't love. It, it never feels like work. Awesome. So how long have you been doing it, doing it for the money? <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, the honest truth is I don't even, I, you know, I, 
I don't do it for the money now. I do it because I love it. Okay. I couldn't even tell you how much money I make, to, to be honest. But, okay. uh, yeah, I've been uh, a realtor, I guess, going on six years now. Six years. Can you see yourself doing anything else? Would you? No. You know, and, and this past summer, it's so funny you say that, because this past summer I was on the beach in Miami, me and my sister, and we ran into um, some. So we here in the middle of the winter, December, and you talking about on the beach in Miami. I would like to be there now. Can we go, guys? <laughs> <laughs> Next <laughs> podcast, we will be on the beach in Miami. <laughs> podcast coming to you. <laughs> but I, um, yeah, we, we met some sisters who were uh, sitting there and, you know, kind of chit-chatting with each other. They stopped us and said, oh, we can tell you guys are sisters. You guys have the same sister vibe. And as we started talking to them, one sister was retired and the other sister was a realtor. And so my sister asked her, why aren't you retired? And she said, I love what I do. I'll never retire from this. And I said, same. Right. I absolutely see me being you, you know. 50 years right. from now, I'm still going to do a deal here and there. I'm still always going to be looking to help someone, always looking to invest in real estate. And I just love it. Awesome. So you said you love helping people. you making, you didn't disclose how much you're making. I mean, because what if somebody <laughs> else out there want to do it for the money? I, mean, I, I don't want to put you no. on the spot. But I mean, would you say you, 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 you live in very comfortable off real estate? Yeah, I would say, like you said, never do anything strictly for the money, but yeah, I, I live comfortably. Okay, okay. We'll talk about how comfortable <laughs> in the next episode. But awesome. I mean, that that's great. Who do you work with primarily? Like, do you work with investors? Do you work with... T t tell us who you work with primarily. These days, I primarily work with you. Okay. <laughs> so, yes, uh, you invest in, in real estate, and uh, you keep me pretty busy. Okay. So. I primarily work with you. I also work with, um, you know, everyone. Um, it's a passion of mine to teach our community about home ownership. So I never turn down an opportunity to help a first-time home buyer, especially. Um, I love educating families. Like you said, our people perish for, for lack of knowledge. So I love educating people about how easy it is, first of all, be to become a first-time homeowner. I can't tell you how many times... People have told me that they can't purchase a home or aren't ready, and literally, you know, two months later, they're in a house. All right. So, you know, great, great point that you bring up about, you know, a lot of people just scared to purchase a home, mm -hmm. right? They don't know the responsibilities. Well, I don't want to, you know, if something goes wrong with my house, if this goes out, this goes out, I don't know nothing about fixing a mm -hmm. house, what do I do? And one thing that I do, I always reference the car. I don't, you know, a female might, you know, a lady might have a car, you know, in, in most cases it might not be new and this breaks down this, but you always manage to figure it out. And I'll let you know if you do your due diligence when buying a house and make sure you do an inspection and different things like that. When you take on that house, you won't have as many problems as you do with your car because it's just, you know, everyday maintenance. So you'll learn that as you go along, but the fear of just a 30 year commitment. Absolutely. People be, and then when you go to sign all those paperwork, it'll be like, you know, your last payment will be in 20, 50, <laughs> right, whatever. Yeah. Right. So you like, <laughs> what? I don't even, you know what I'm yeah. saying? But again, it's just that fear of getting over that initial fear. So, mm -hmm. uh, but again, just letting people know it's not as difficult as it seems. Uh, you know, growing up, you know, I'm from, East Chicago, right outside of Gary, outside of Chicago, not Chicago, but East Chicago, Indiana. Uh, you know, I come from a hardworking family. Uh, my mother worked at the steel mill 25 years. I lost my father at an early age. My grandmother uh, worked um, her whole life as a, uh, you know, custodian at the, at the schools. My other grandmother worked at the hospital, but, you know, everybody worked. So nobody really had that entrepreneurial, you know, in them until I came along. And my grandmother, you know, would always say, you know, go get a job. That's what everybody mm -hmm. preach. Mother, go get a job. You know, that's it. Go to school, go to college. You know, I went to college, but, you know, uh, I stopped because I was being extremely uh, successful in the real estate and also in um, 
corporate America. So I stopped. Uh, I stopped college at, at one point. I was what, four years in, you know what I'm saying? But I decided to, you know, pursue my professional career. I left uh, corporate America at 29. You know, I had no fears at that point. I thought yeah. I could take on the world like, man, I can do whatever. And, you know, I tried real estate back. The market crashed in 08. It did. Um, and I literally lost everything. Uh, but, you know, I didn't let that stop me. I, you know, I kept going. But I learned a lot of valuable lessons along the way. Uh, one, don't put all your eggs in one basket. So mm -hmm. I try to be, stay as diversified as possible. So not only do I do real estate, I have other multiple businesses. So in case, you know, something similar. Because mm -hmm. everybody keeps saying another crash is coming. Another crash is coming. There's no way the real estate market could hold up. What are your thoughts on that? You know, I don't know that another crash is coming based on the fact that um, the conditions that created the crash have nothing to do with what's happening now. But I want to touch on a point that you just mentioned um, previously, and I've kind of had this conversation with you before, but one of the reasons I believe that you are so successful is that you are always willing to learn from your mistakes and you don't give up. You know, I, I think that um, I know other real estate investors that, lost everything in the crash, and will never invest another time. But you chose to examine the situation, learn from it, and I believe that's a big part about why you're successful. Would you agree? I definitely, definitely agree. I literally, you know, like the old saying goes, go back to the drawing board. Absolutely. What worked, what didn't work, mm -hmm. and, you know, bring those things together and make it happen. Um, this year, last year, I, you know, I got an award for uh, from one – company I purchased like 75 houses last year mm -hmm. uh my goal was 100 you know the pandemic happened that slowed things down um so this year I said you know what I'm gonna come back I'm gonna do 100 I'm at 98 I need two more in the contract two well, houses that's a lot of pressure where are we gonna find those two houses at? anybody that got a house <laughs> let us know <laughs> we, we two houses away from the uh 100 house market so but okay. again it gotta make sense but you know, I just thank God for the blessings that uh, he, he's given us this, you know, this year and basically our entire life. But I'm excited about it, excited about the podcast. And, you know, what would you say is the most difficult part in working in the real estate, especially in, in this market? Um, the one thing I have heard people say is difficult is that there is um, – a surplus of buyers and not enough houses available. Um, but I believe that in real estate, uh, you have to be a problem solver. And so That's in any, any in anything thing. for sure. Right. But, but I would say my key to success has been identifying the situation and then working it out. And so finding creative solutions for finding houses and, you know, pairing people with the right houses. I always tell people I'm never concerned. My client is always going to get the house and Hey, by the way, you only need one. Right. So I'm not worried about how many houses are out there. Well, I need two. Don't forget, I you, need two. This client more. needs two. Well, and I, and we got about, <laughs> about 10 days to get two old properties on the contract. So, again, but what, you know, where do you, with all the competitive, it seems like right now everybody want to do real estate. Mm -hmm. Everybody think, you know, real estate is the way to make money. Everybody think, you know, right now is real estate. How could, you know, Right now is probably the easiest time to do real estate mm -hmm. because of, you know, just the market. You know, properties in high demand, uh, not enough properties, not enough homes. So it's, it's real easy to make some money. That's true. And what I found out is it, it kind of has somebody thinking that this is the easy it's easy to do it and they don't understand. They haven't seen, you know, a house <laughs> finished and then you sitting on it and you're yeah. still paying mortgages. But, uh, what do you, what are your thoughts on stuff like that? It, do you think it's easy to make money? I know you only been doing it for six years. I don't know that easy is the word. The one thing I, I told a, a girl who asked me, she actually is just about finished with real estate school now. So, I did try to give her a very full picture, and she decided to move forward. But one thing I told her is that as a realtor, you don't get paid until a house closes. You don't get paid for showings. You don't get paid for meeting with people or 
you know, even. So what you saying? You just waste a whole lot of time before you make money. Or you get better at not wasting time. Mm, so like you listen well. Okay. Yeah, you listen well. You find out exactly what your client's looking for. You don't. You set realistic expectations. So if you tell me that your budget is two hundred and fifty thousand and you want a five bedroom in Munster, we're not going to look at five bedrooms in Munster. If you tell Can you me get a five bedroom in, in Gary for two hundred fifty thousand. Yes, but a five bedroom house is hard to come by anywhere. Okay, okay. But but yes, in Gary, at the price point of about two thirty five, right? We can we can get a five bedroom. Um, the other thing is that, um, like I said, in setting realistic expectations, we're you know I I educate clients on what the market looks like now. So if the house is listed at three hundred thousand, we're not going to see it with the plan of offering them two seventy. Right. So a lot of people. They're saying, well, houses are too high. I'll mm-hmm. wait to buy a house mm-hmm. uh, because it's just it's just houses are overpriced. Do you do you agree with that? Not even a little bit. I tell all of my friends and family, especially, but again, as as I said, I treat my clients now like friends and family. Um, that now is absolutely the time to buy because money is so cheap. Interest rates were at a historic low just a few months ago. They're still very very low. And so your interest, you know, your mortgage payment is made up of your principal, your taxes, your insurance, and the interest that you're paying. And when we look at the difference between what you were paying just two years ago, maybe even one year ago in interest versus now, it makes no sense. I don't care if the house that you're looking at is twenty, forty thousand more than it was two years ago. Um, it makes sense. It makes sense. And, and I read somewhere they said don't wait to buy real estate buy real estate and wait. Oh, absolutely. And, and you know, you are the the guru when it comes to investing. So if anyone knows that. I don't that, know about a guru. But <laughs> I don't know. How do you how you come up with that title? At what point do you reach the guru stage? I, I'm aiming for it, but I don't know if I'm there now. I mean, that's definitely something that I aim to do, but I don't know if guru, because guru is like, what do you go from guru? You can know what we I'm can we say that if you get these two houses by the end of the year? Oh, I'm a guru. I'm definitely a guru. <laughs> if I get if I get these two houses, I'm I'm the self proclaimed guru at that point. So yeah. So I'm, on the I'm, next I'm, podcast, I'm officially change my name. I'm, I'm a pull. I'm I'm a pull one. You know, when they go and change their name, my name will be guru. Guru Rasifa. So yeah. So, but I, I'm excited. I mean. Uh, this again, you know, everybody say, well, how do you find houses? Where do you, where do you get the house? How do you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, you just, you know, wholesalers, what is a Mm -hmm. wholesaler? Wholesaler is somebody that's out there driving for dollars, hustling. Mm -hmm. Uh, you don't need no money to, to start wholesaling. All you need is a hustle. You gotta, and the hustle gotta be, you know, second to none because you hustling against a whole lot of other people that ain't got no money and all they doing is looking looking to uh you know get a house up on the contract. So and consistency. Can we say not not a a hustle on Tuesday and Wednesday, but I think the key to being a successful wholesaler and, and I'm getting this because I was actually talking to a wholesaler that we work with the other day and we were talking about a few houses and um I said, Well what happened with that one house? He was like, Well I don't know, I, I never called them and I said <laughs> he probably right. sold it to someone so, else. Yeah, you gotta. <laughs> yeah, I you mean, know. you gotta stay on it. I mean, I have people, um, as you know, they six, seven, eight months ago, mm-hmm. they wasn't ready to sell. They call mm-hmm. us back. Hey, I'm ready to sell. You know, your client's still ready to buy. Now, my only problem with that is we probably should have reached out to them mm-hmm. and you know have a system in place before they reach out Absolutely. to us. But because you know. Out of sight, out of mind. But thankful they kept our contact information. But definitely, I say you know consistency. Um, I'm not sure if you're talking about the wholesaler that I'm thinking about, but I had a wholesaler that was you know bringing us properties, and he was like, you know, I don't know if this is something I want to do. I haven't made no money, and mm. you know, two three months in, a year later, we didn't purchase. 13 houses from the same guy wow. and he's thanking us every day like man you changed my life i mean he's made a bunch of money uh from wholesaling but again he he was right there before it was time to make money but he was ready to give up so you don't know how close you are to 
you know, achieving your goal in, in wholesaling, real estate, or whatever it is you do. So just make sure you just keep going, man, because you could be real close to, you know, changing your life and uh, just give up and you don't realize how close you are. So guru with the life inspiration. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so. But seriously, yeah, don't quit. I, I fully agree with you. And um, by the way, how do you know I don't have a system in place for following up with them? Uh, I don't know. I, I absolutely do. do. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. So that answers my question. So great. I mean, like what you say is, cause I know you mentioned a couple of times you never really work with investors cause they difficult to work with. Uh, no, no, I don't want to pin any of your past investors, but what would you say? What would you say the most difficult part in working with someone like myself? You know, I, I will speak to just investors that I've met in general first because I think it's imp an important factor is um, you asked how easy is it to make money when it comes to investing. There's a lot of work involved. First of all, it takes money to make money. You can't be cheap, do the, you know, absolute lowest cost upgrades and then want your realtor to sell your house for the highest amount. But I don't know, in this market... No, even in this market. Okay. It, and I mean, are there some things that you can maybe get away with because of the shortage? Yes. But, um, I mean, in that being said, you don't go cheap on anything. And I, I Right. And I, and I don't because I, I like to use the reference mm -hmm. uh, from one of my favorite movies, American Gangster, uh, <laughs> Blue Magic. Yeah. Like, Blue Magic was known for being the best and, you know, definitely not considering or looking at drugs or anything but mm -hmm. you know when you have a brand name like whatever i want mr flip the hood to have a brand like he's going to put the best product out there right. he's going to have the best he's not going to and anybody that i sell a house to i ensure them hey if you have any questions after the case yeah we sold it yes you got a home inspection but if any issues come let us because again we want that product to be put out there we want our brand to be second to none. So that's what I focus on. That's what, you know, we out there practicing and we out there making sure that, you know, our product is the best out there. I do know that to be true. I've seen you take houses and, you know, take them down to the absolute studs and then, you know, restore them, which is probably my favorite part of working with you is just watching the restoration process. Right. Again, watching the houses come back Yesterday's to price is not today's <laughs> price. I love that. Yesterday's I, 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 price is not, not today's, today's price. price. We go yeah. in the house today, and yesterday it was in whatever shambles we go in today. Yesterday's price is not today's price. So. It's absolutely not. And not only because you spent the money to make the house new, but when working with dad properties, your knowledge and expertise also comes there. And so you're you're checking all the systems of the home and making sure that everything is working properly the way that it's supposed to before we make it beautiful. This is not a lipstick on the pig situation. Right. And so. Awesome. Awesome. So real estate for me, again, I, I love what I do. Um, you know, yes, it's, it's a lot of money to be made. But again, I, I, you know, I don't do what I do for money. But how much money do you make? Um, I love what I do. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't do what I do for money. I mean, extremely comfortable, um, extremely blessed. Uh, but again, it's just a matter of just going out there, changing lives, putting products, you know, in my community, I want the best, you know, I don't want somebody to have to move out to, you know, the suburbs to get high quality. This high quality. I want that in my neighborhood. That's, you know, where, hence the Mr. Flip the Hood. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm flipping the hood, I'm flipping the houses, mm -hmm. I'm flipping the mindsets to, you know, allow people to say, hey, I can have the best, you know, in my neighborhood and I have to go out. So that's what I'm doing. Um, I'm excited, changing lives of so many uh, mm -hmm. people, um, opportunity to give employment to so many people. I'm just, man, overly, overly grateful, thankful, and just looking forward to so much, so much more. It is very inspirational that you're making such an impact in your community. I know for myself, beyond just wanting to uh, meet our community, I love restoring homes in Gary and East Chicago. I tell everyone that I feel like 
the houses in Gary and East Chicago are just built different than many other cities that I see. And and yes, many of them have been through and weathered the storms and need to be restored. But once we put our magic on them, blue magic, blue magic. <laughs> they're amazing. I would put those houses up to, you know, Any most house. other Absolutely. houses. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I mean, cause like they say, they don't build houses like they used to, um, Back in, I don't know, when the houses were built, they were built for a lot of the steel mill workers. And so, you know, doctors, East Chicago in certain areas. So it, it was built great, you right. know. But, you know, over time, you know, the money left, the steel mills left. Mm -hmm. So a lot of those houses went abandoned. But, you know, you know, now we coming in, restoring them. You got a lot of investors. I, I you know, honestly, I don't like to see an investor come on and put lipstick on the pig, as you as you say. <laughs> I like for, you know, you come yeah. in and you bring, you know, bring it to, you know, excellent standards, top of the line this, top of the line that, and don't make no shortcuts because I believe, you know, our people definitely deserve. Deserve, deserve the best. And whether it's a renter that's not understanding, you know, credit or the buying process, mm -hmm. and we help them through that process, or, or the buyer that's looking to, you know, raise a family in a good area. So that's what we looking to do, you know, yeah, um, and I'm excited, man. I'm, it's a lot, lot to look forward to a lot to, you know? Yeah. I, I would agree with you. And I think, you know, getting back to those two houses, maybe we can make my job a little easy. What would you say you're looking for? What condition do you buy houses in? Uh, again, you missed the flip the hood. You know, we buy them in, you know, in most cases, dilapidated condition, uh, not so good condition, but hey, we'll buy them with our tenant. We'll buy them without any house. We look, we need two deals again. We need two deals to get to the century mark. Uh, I mean, you know, we probably own uh, over 200 doors right now. I remember um, my grandmother telling me growing up, my second house, she like, Baby, you, you you sure you wanna you sure you wanna do this? You, you mm -hmm. know this your second house. You you like she didn't mean nothing by it. She wanted yeah. nothing but the best from me, but she didn't want me to buy my second house. Right. You know what I'm saying? I didn't bought my second house like a thousand times. You know what I'm saying? So over the years, I mean <sighs> buying and selling, but I'm I'm excited, man. You know, um, again being able to provide for for you know for different people. Mm -hmm. You know, giving back. I mean, that's what it's all about. I hope your story inspires other people who maybe have doubts based on what they're hearing around them to also want to invest and, you know, take that leap right. because, yeah, there's we both live very comfortably and, right. and real estate has been very good to us. I, You know, the funny thing is, kind of similar to, to your story, my mother told me the same thing about sales. Definitely don't go into sales. Go into get go to college, get an education, do something else. Um, and I've always really loved working with people. So even you know, like you said, while I was in college, I you know did different jobs. I was I worked as a recruiter um, while I was in college, and ended up leaving college as well, and eventually continued doing that um, for a How long time. How many jobs did you have? Um, what have I done? So. Right out of college, I left college um, and got a job. I was going to school for education, and I got a job as a teacher while I was still going to school. A crazy situation happened where um, I was subbing, and the teacher got fired. <laughs> I was. That's another story, but I yeah. was in the same exact situation. I wow. was subbing. What a parallel teacher, situation. teacher got fired, and uh, I, I was just subbing just, again, just to – interact with the kids yeah. and just really doing it for them. And, yeah. but yeah, so. same. I, I love kids. I, I love teaching. I was, uh, subbing for a math class and math has always been one of my passions and actually was what I was going to school for. And the teacher got fired and the department head came to me and he said, I told the principal that you can do this. The job is yours. Wow. I was like, Oh, <laughs> like I was, yeah, the job is yours. And so, and this was literally like two weeks into the school year. Wow. And so um, I finished out that school year and uh, there were things I loved about it and also things that made me think that I did not want to go into 
into teaching. Into teaching. Well, education. It, into working in the school system. But um, I got an offer to recruit, making double the salary as the, the year was ending. And I, I just so say, it, God. It seemed like you always following the money. No, it's not the money, but I have to say, and, and a God's favor has been in my life so incredibly to the point where while I don't ever focus on money, I also tell people the reason I can say that is because I've just. I just don't think about money, and God's always made sure I've had enough. So you think about it at first, and then, <laughs> and then after you make it, you don't think about it. Though. Right. Once it's in the account, there's there's no need okay. to count it. Okay. okay. So, <laughs> but no. So yeah, I I got an offer, and it was like double the amount of money. It was like, well, I guess I'll try this, and that was recruiting. And again, I loved working with people, and so I worked as a recruiter for a number of years. Um, and that was great. Then I. Took some time to uh, be a stay-at-home mom, and um, I have two kids. Vivi and JJ are eight and ten. Um, once they went back to school and I was ready to work again, I ended up here. And up in real estate, so excited. So, what do you? What does your typical day of yours look like? I get up extremely early. I'm always early? five. Yeah, I'm always up with the sun or, or beforehand these days. I I don't like that I get up right now and it's dark outside. So, um, but I get up early and we'll usually, I try to talk to God first. I try to um, read uh, the, uh, the Bible. Um, I used to not do it in the morning, but someone said I should start my day that way. And I was like, that's a good idea. And the someone is sitting here on this podcast with me. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I try to start reading the Bible in the morning, um, taking a minute, talking to God. And then, like most of us, I get right into what's going on on my phone. I check emails and, you know, look at text messages. Because I get up so early, I also go to bed really early. And so I miss a lot, <laughs> you know. So when you get up, like a lot of people say, get up early. My thing is, if you go get up early, be productive with the time mm -hmm. that you get up. Mm -hmm. Don't get up at 4 or 5 just to say, I'm up every day at 4 or 5 and you're on social media. Are you actually being productive with your time? You know, I, I believe you got to have a, you know, a, a recipe, you know, for success, a championship mm -hmm. routine, as, as they would say. What does your championship routine uh, look like I 100% agree with what you're saying and so like I was saying I get up um, I make coffee I have coffee every morning and as soon as my coffee is done I'm in front of my computer I'm um, looking at what files and any work that I can do without having to talk to someone else I do so whether that's emails or tracking you know where my transactions are you know following up doing all of those things I cover those things first thing in the morning um, but it's interesting you say that because I just read an article that said Jeff Bezos' recipe is working. And he says kind of that he slumps around all day and, you know, it's productive. Usually I think the article said about 2 p.m. And so the article was encouraging people that, that there may also be a key to success there. And I read it and instantly instantly thought, okay, that's fine for them, but I'm going to keep getting up at five. I mean, I, and I don't know if he did that to get to where he's at now, but right. I'm sure, you know, now he could, you know, slump around um, yeah. every every now and then. But. You know, and honestly, I just thought about this, but maybe there's a key to that because part of the reason that I get up so early is that my mind works best in the morning. I know as I get later in the day, I am much less productive as oh, the yeah. day goes on. Absolutely. And so maybe for other people, you know, that it, 2 p.m. start it's works. It's the opposite. Yeah, I've yeah. always been one, go to, you know, go to bed early and mm -hmm. uh, up early and productive, up early and at most. You know, my championship routine is, you know, getting up, praying, reading the Bible, uh, working out. It. I feel if I don't work out, my day is kind of shot. I try to work out five Six days a week. Yeah. All I got to do is get my eating right together and bring those two things yeah. together, and I'll be all right. But the working out yeah. is halfway there, but I just got to bring the other half. But let's let's talk about the real estate uh, and working with investors. Um, so somebody like me, people always ask me, what do it take to get started? How much, how much money do you need to get started? And, you know, my response has always been, you know, as long as just know that it's not, you know, people look at me, like, man, you 
successful, the overnight mm-hmm. success, because I'm posting on social media, but, you know, my overnight success took, you know, basically 25, 25 plus years. Right. But they don't see all of the failures in most cases. You know, a lot of people don't show showcase their failures. Who, you know, mm-hmm. who really would, unless you're in front of the, you know, the spotlight every day. But it's a lot of failures to get to the point to where I'm, where I'm at. A lot of people look at me and say, well, how you do it and what do you say? Man, it's, it's 20 years. They say to be successful in anything is going to take, you know, 10,000 hours. That's, you know, over five years before you reach any level of success in any particular area. But people just give up so quick that they never reach that level, you know, of success. So I, I would was, agree. I would say that the money is, it, it's one part of it. I'm not going to say the money is the easy part because you have to save a, a good amount of money to invest. But I think having a mentor, and I know that you can't mentor everybody, but certainly I've watched you mentor people, but having a mentor, whether it be you or someone else, has to be key because... I tell people all the time, that has to be number one. The number one mm-hmm. thing is getting a mentor uh, mm-hmm. in this because you'll you'll lose so much money by you think you're saving money by mm-hmm. not... If that mentor... Uh, is is offering you know classes or mm-hmm. if there's classes out in the area, take some classes, read, invest in yourself. Like you know, people yeah. aware or pay for this or that, but don't want to spend you know a thousand, fifteen hundred to invest in themselves. And I think that is critical to the success in in real estate. You know, I've been able this year. I've you know I partnered with a few people, been able to bring you know, them into real estate, teach them some things about real estate and kind of curve, you know, their learning curve a little bit and just excited about everything that, you know, able to do with them. But I think if you can learn from other people's mistakes and be so much further ahead of the game that way, I mean, that that is the key. I remember when I first got into real estate and um, – I remember walking through houses where um, it was for sale, but they were mid project, and it was like, "Well, why are all these materials here? Right? Why are?" And then (laughs) we we come across those every every now and then, continuously now. Yeah, we see them now. But I remember thinking, "Well, why would they just leave materials if they started here?" And then I started figuring things out, and then I I said, "Okay." They ran into an expensive problem, a, a major defect. And it's like, like you said, you have to do your homework. You have to know what you're looking for, whether you're coming in as a first time homeowner or an investor, you definitely, you know, we're not walking through the house just to see if it looks nice, but you know, it, it's right. a house. So I, I tell kind of, people again, I'm able, I'm at a place now where I don't necessarily have to bring a contractor in right. with me, but I say, if you go your first step, is to one understand the market, mm-hmm. get with a good realtor uh, that's going to understand the values of that market, the trends of that market. That's that's important. Do you know uh, any good realtors? I know a few. <laughs> I know a few. Uh, but definitely um, get with a good realtor. Uh, want you know, a lot of people say, "Well, do I use my own cash? How much cash do I mm-hmm. need?" I mean, obviously, again, the markets has changed. I remember five, six, seven years ago, you can get a house in Gary, ten thousand mm-hmm. uh, dollars. Put another five, ten, you can get a tenant in there. You know those times have changed. Uh, Definitely, those times have changed. But again, it's still some good deals out there. Not no five, ten thousand uh, dollar deals. The price on material is going up. But in terms of, do you use your own cash or don't? I say it's always better to use other people money. Um, that's been my motto for the longest. It works great for me because I look at the money you use on finding one deal, if it was just your own cash, using other people money and you only using 10%, you can find five, six, seven, eight deals. Um, and you know, different things you need to get qualified, you know, good credit you want to have about 30,000 in reserve. Mm -hmm. A lot of people will, if I had $30,000 to invest in real estate, I don't, you know, then again, you can get in it other ways. You can go on a tax sale, but again, tax sales is very competitive now. They are. You got people coming from out of state investing Mm -hmm. in certain markets. So, 
that's you can't even get it's not as easy to get in that way as it was four or five six years ago so i mean again wholesalers i, I you know advocate with wholesalers mm -hmm. and that because again you don't need no i ain't gonna say you don't need no money because you still got to invest in different apps and different things like that but that's still the avenue with minimum money you know a couple thousand dollars you can get you can get started but again nothing is going to curve to hard work you got to have whether you investor or contractor a wholesaler realtor it's go you know the cream mm -hmm. cream cream always rises to the crop top so you just gotta you know hustle hustle hard i would agree i, I think another thing i thought about was it's important to know um what the value of a house is before you start investing in it right you know i've um i when I first started in real estate, I, I worked with an investor who um, I told him this is what the houses are selling for in the area. He put a ton of money into a house. That was not me, by the way. It was not you. And, and he put a ton of money into a house and did not get his money out of the house. Um, he right. was very upset, but, you know. But again, we, we all make those mistakes, mm -hmm. right? I've, you know, over put money in houses, mm -hmm. you know, I'm still, you know, I ain't gonna call them rookie mistakes, but it's still mistakes that you learn in real estate. Don't, don't ever get to the point of anything that you say, well, you know, I know everything about it, it is because as soon as you think you know that you go find out that you don't know Absolutely. half of what you thought you knew. But again, it's still, it's still, you know, you still make the mistakes, but again, the key is learning from those mistakes. A mistake is only a mistake when you fail to learn from it. That's so, true. Yeah, so. I, I would agree. but And even so, again, I prefer to learn from other people's mistakes. Absolutely. <laughs> but you, you'll learn just as much from your own if, you, if you're taking good notes. I make about three a day. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so how many hours do you say you, you work a day, a week? Uh, you know, that's a good question. Most people would say that I work too much. I absolutely love what I do. Like I said, it does not feel like work. I wake up doing this, and I go to sleep doing this in some facet. So, um, but yeah, I work all the time. Okay, what's, what's all the time? 10 hours a day, 70 hours a week? Um, yeah, I, I don't know. Probably so. And I do say, you know, the beauty of this career, though, and, and any – entrepreneurial avenue is on the flip side when we don't want to work we don't have to so there are times that you know I may work two three weeks straight no days off all day every day and then I say you know what Tuesday and Wednesday I'm not really going to do anything right yeah I, I say that too but it always the days I say I'm not going to do much it's always something that's going to bring you bring you back into I I really yeah. if you look at how many hours I work I, I don't even want to I don't want to count. You see, I avoided the question. <laughs> I don't even want to count because I'm thinking, okay, if I work, if I get up at 5 and work 5 to 5, that's 12 hours. <laughs> but I know I ain't never stopped at 5. And I know. So I'm thinking, <laughs> what, that's 17 hours a day working? That's a lot. But again, it's, it's, you know, I don't, I have, those are the hours I put in. But when you look at the work, you know, the word work, I, I, don't, I don't work an hour a week. Because no. it's just so, you know, it's fun to me. I mean, I love what I do. It's I'm, fulfilling. I haven't. It is. You know, there's some days that, you know, it's, it, it's, it's definitely testing your stress levels and your patience and, and all of that fun <laughs> stuff. Because working with contractors, oh, man, you it, it definitely, definitely can be challenging. Yeah. I, I tell anybody, you know, don't, don't just, you know, go off of what a contractor, go out there inspect don't never get com too comfortable right with a contractor you know make sure you check in on his work and again if you don't know be like why well, how do i know if he's doing it right you know i tell people anybody know me know i'm gonna tell you go to youtube if somebody yeah. is doing plumbing installing plumbing for a house or electrical go there watch some videos on plumbing mm -hmm. watch some videos on electrical furnace work so you'll have an overview of what they doing so they can't yeah. just do anything i uh, absolutely would agree with that and i would also say i ask a lot of questions 
I tell people all the time, you know, one of our contractors jokingly tells me he's going to charge me a consultation fee. Right. But and, but, and, but here's again, yeah. you can ask those questions, mm -hmm. but how do you know they're giving you the right answer? Oh, no. 100% so to your gotta point. So you got to make sure yeah. that you know something, mm -hmm. not just going in there totally blind because, again, they'll... And I say get close with, you know, home inspectors. Mm -hmm. uh, again, if you don't have a lot of experience in flipping... Uh, the city inspectors, before you pay a contractor out for a certain point, because you should set it up to where that contractor is getting paid out in phases. Right. Once this is done, they get paid out in this. Once this is done, they get paid out. Make sure that contractor has a you know contractor license for the city so they Absolutely. can pull those permits. Um, so if there's any issues, you can go back and go against the insurance, make sure you involve that city inspector. Make sure you call them out to the projects. If they're doing electrical, if they're doing plumbing, because they're, they're the more expert, you know, experts in those fields where when they come out, they can say, hey, this is not done, this needs to be done, and that's something you might not have caught, but, again, you can catch because that city inspector. And then I say before you pay any, any contractor, you know, do a home inspection. Absolutely. Home inspection, yes, it's going to cost $300, but at the same time, it's, it'll save you thousands because you might not pay this contractor. You'll pay the contractor and realize at the end of the day that he didn't did all of this work and it wasn't, you know, in, in, in the way it was supposed to be done. So. And and beyond that, I say, well, two things. Two, two thoughts came to my mind. Number one, when I first started in real estate, my home inspector did become my best friend. I went to all the inspections. I asked them all the questions. I, and it was because, again, I wanted to treat my clients like family and, and, you know, protect them and advocate for them. And so I needed to understand what exactly was going on. And so I did get a lot of knowledge from him. Not that I know everything. I still have plenty of questions. But I learned a lot from him. But even on that note, um, you um, – No, I'm not sure. train of thought. You grabbed your water and I went, oh, <laughs> the water did it. But yeah, so learning from those people. But, oh, you said something and I wanted to make sure you went back to it. It's a phrase you say all the time. Um, I got a couple of phrases I say all the time. We'll go, you, which one you go? You've for? been very inspirational today. Okay. Inspect what you expect. No, inspect yeah. what you expect. Right. So basically, it, whatever you tell a contractor or whoever, hey, this is my expectations. Mm -hmm. I want this done. I want this done. Mm -hmm. You got to actually physically go out to the job site and inspect what right. you expected of that contractor because that's what they're going to do, what you inspect. Not always what you expect. Right. So you got to make sure, you know. And, you and communication is key. Another thing that I've learned from you is, you know, because I've had people tell me, oh, well, I can, you know, I don't have time to really invest, but I can give you the money and you just, you know, we'll find a contractor to do it. And I, no, it does take a lot of time of being on top of them because let's say that they're a fantastic contractor, but they didn't understand your expectation. You want to know that on day number two rather than when the job's done. Right, exactly. And so that's important. That's important, absolutely. So, um, what other advice would you give to, you know, the listeners out there that say, hey, should I get into this? Should I start investing? I mean, I know, obviously, you said earlier with the interest rates are low, go ahead. But just not necessarily a home. But what about an investor? Is it, I know the market is competitive. What well, would you suggest? And this is something I've heard you say, but I'm going to paraphrase it a little differently. If you have a sum of money. You can look at how much money your money is making sitting in the bank. Right. But, again, and just to piggyback off what you said about the uh, the money the money sitting in the bank, a lot of people say, well, you know, I want to have X amount of dollars in the bank. But you got to understand one thing uh, about money sitting in the bank. It's something very critical out there that's called inflation. Mm -hmm. And inflation, basically, uh, to sum it up, is saying you're losing essentially 2% off of your money just sitting in the bank. Well, how am I losing 2% if I'm making a little interest or whatever? Uh, because today, we all know with this pandemic, $1,000 last year cannot, if you took that $1,000 last year and went to 
whether it's grocery shopping, whatever the case may be, right. you cannot get the same thousand dollars stuff today. Right. You'll probably get eight, nine hundred dollars worth. So that means your money is losing value. So in if nothing else, you have to invest to keep up with inflation. I 100% agree. And there's a lot of things that you can invest in. The one thing that I tell people, I mean, I invest in the stock market as well. It's a lot of fun. But one, Is it fun when you're losing money? I don't lose very often. Okay. <laughs> it's not true. I have lost. But, okay. but yes, it's still fun. I'm kind of a go-with-the-flow girl. So I don't invest more than I can lose. And, and that being said, yeah, you know, there's, there's times that I uh, will, will look at my apps and say, oh. <laughs> that one hurt a little bit, right. <laughs> you know, but yes, it, it's still fun. Um, but I look at real estate being the most stable investment. Reason being, even when we talk about how the market's going up and down, the need for housing is never going away. Right. It just, it, it's never going away. And the houses aren't going to blow away. You buy a house and it is an asset that you have for as long as you want long as you're making money off of it, right? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, awesome. So uh, we talked about, you know, your real estate, your experience. Uh, is there anything else you want to talk about? Uh, you know, I um, no, real estate is, is something that I love. I, I am very passionate about it. And I'm always happy to help. You can always reach out to me, and I'm happy to answer questions. And So how can they reach you if they, if they want to reach out to you? You know, I'm, my social media is open. Um, everything is open, so I, you know. So I, my name, name is Christina Lee on Instagram. Uh, Christina Lee Realtor is my handle. You can reach me there. You can always send me a message. My number is 219-805-9193. Um, I'm and, not going to be as comfortable giving my number out there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, I guess you're a realtor, so you, it, it's nothing for you to do it, but, yeah. No, it's okay. I'll tell people, uh, if I don't answer, just text me. <laughs> yeah. But, but yeah, I'm always happy to help. I'm happy to answer questions. And really, it comes back to what I said. I would much rather you reach out and ask me a question and find out that you can buy, that you are ready to invest, than, than be scared or timid. I love talking to people, um, and I just really love helping people. As long as you're making money, because I know no, a couple no. of times you said, no. you know, you you, you you started because you wanted to make money. You left the school <laughs> because you got offered twice the money. So it's, you know, I remember Deion Sanders had his, it's only for the money or whatever the song he had. So, you know, it, it's, I would like to not make money. I'd like to do this for free. But as you said, yesterday's price. Is not today's price. <laughs> yeah, yesterday's price is not today's price. So the, the truth is, I would do this for free. Yeah, and that, and I yeah. tell people all the time: find something that you would do for free, mm -hmm. and then find out how you can make money from it. But I'm blessed because I don't do this for free. Okay, but you would. I would. So if I, anything I need you to do from now on, you're not charging me. From now through the rest of the year, maybe should I give him a discount on these last two deals? We'll talk about it. Okay, we'll talk about <laughs> it. Okay, but yeah, I'm I, again. We we excited. Um, how many? I don't know if I want to say. But how many deals do you think <laughs> we we we've done together? I don't keep track, um, and the reason is I tell people I always hustle like I have three dollars. I don't. I don't know how much money's in my account. Is the honest statement. I don't know how many deals I've done. I don't know I how many people I've helped. I check my account every day because no, you know you got people out there that you know. Yeah. No, but I mean, I don't keep track of you know what what I'm what I'm doing. I don't know. Exactly I don't count my money every day. Right. But I check my accounts every day. It's, you make sure everything's where it's yeah, supposed make to sure be. Everything is. Everything yeah. is everything. I leave it at that. Yeah. So <laughs> there's, I'm good stewardship. Definitely, you you have to make sure that yeah. everything's where it's supposed to be. Um, I couldn't tell you how many deals we did. If I had to estimate, um, a lot, a lot, a lot. I would say that nowadays, I feel like we are. It it's probably very fair to say that we are buying at least three houses a week. Would you agree Each. with that? You don't think so? Well, and I'm estimating there may be weeks that we buy five or six, seven. Yeah. There've been, you know. I've I've had days where in one day we we close five five five, yeah. five or six deals. 
So. I had one day we went to three different title companies. <laughs> I so try I to avoid have, that. <laughs> I have to come back to another one to yeah. sign some. The, the, you know, the closer is upset because we leaving. I'm like, well, I'm wanted at this title company. I got to go. But, no, I get it. I mean, I mean, it's it's difficult, but it's fun. I mean, it's an adrenaline. You know, a lot of people say, you know, when they on stage or on the – court on the field or whatever the adrenaline is what keeps them going i definitely say the adrenaline from you know buying the houses mm -hmm. and the transformation to get the price what it was from today to tomorrow's <laughs> price is definitely definitely excited so you know we it's different things you can do in real estate different ways to make money you can wholesale mm -hmm. um again i keep mentioning wholesalers because you got to have a, as an investor you got to be best friends with wholesalers. Those have to be your We're, best friends. We got a couple great wholesalers that's bringing us great deals. We can mm -hmm. close deals. What's the quickest we've closed in a deal? Four days. Four days. Four days. And that's not on your end. That's because it takes title four days to clear a clean title. I never want to buy anything without a clean title because without equitable title, we're stuck with the house. Right. And it and can be liens, judgments. So you all go of to that. Right, so, so that's that's important. But, but again, we literally can close in four days, and and I would agree with you. We're so anybody very got a house friendly. out there? We need mm -hmm. two houses. I know we keep saying <laughs> it, we need two. We can close before the end of the year. We still definitely. got some time left. So so definitely so. Yeah, and three. you know I have a feeling you're gonna make those too. Okay, all right. <laughs> well, until my phone rings and say we got an accepted offer, uh, it's go it's gonna be hard for me to just. You know, yeah. go with, go with that feeling. But I'm excited. I, I do know, um, you know, deals come. You know, people ask me, "Where you find the deals? How do you?" You know, I think mm -hmm. you know it's another saying. I I, I got quotes for days, but mm -hmm. one quote is, "The harder you work, the luckier the bless you get." That's so. 100%. I just think you know, you put it out there in the atmosphere. You 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 put the work in. You know, people will literally. I get deals from. You know, people that I didn't even know knew I was doing real estate mm -hmm. and bought to me. My cousin selling the house, you know, and, and you know, sometimes it's unfortunate situations uh, what you know, they call you a family member has passed. And, you know, uh, but, you know, those situations, it, you can turn around and be a blessing to their family, get them out, kind of walk them through that Um I would process. agree. I, I think, and again, to my, you know, we jokingly said the money, but the truth is I really do do this because I love helping people. And it's very, very rare that we end a transaction without sellers thanking us. Yeah. You know, we're very fair with our prices. I We don't take advantage of anybody. We, you know, the I usually tell people, let me be the professional. This should be very easy and painless for you. And, you know, we're going to wire a nice... <laughs> you know, Mom. chunk of change to you. Right. But again, and then you, you'll you get a lot of the business we get is from referrals. Definitely. From people that we purchase houses from. Mm -hmm. They say, hey, you know, you bought my house. My um, brother wants to, you know, is selling his house. My So, you know, real estate is definitely a game of referrals. Whether, you know, whether you're an agent, exactly the relationships, whether you're an agent, an investor, a wholesaler. It's all about the relationship that you build. That's where, uh, you know, you'll make the money from is from the relationship. I agree. I agree, and it's very important. And, and as a um, as a realtor, I think the best thing that you can do, you know, you kind of mentioned earlier competition. I don't really think competition is a thing. I think there's enough business for us all. There's enough houses for all of us. Absolutely. Um, I think as a realtor, the key to success is letting people know that you're a realtor. I can't tell you how many times I've talked to people and they say, oh, well, I don't want to ask people for business. I don't really tell them what I do. I just, and it's like. How will they know? How will they know? Right. <laughs> how will they, you know, so yeah, definitely that. I think relationships are important. Always being there to help people and, you know, building, building the type of relationships where, you know, people do come to you when it's time. So, um, again, we, we doing a podcast today from an Airbnb. Uh, again, I say you stay diversified in, in whatever you do. Uh, yes, we buy real estate. We sell real estate. Uh, we have rentals, uh, short-term rentals, long-term rentals. 
Uh, we flipping. A lot of times, it's so much you got to know when it's when you deal with flipping. A lot of people just think is, you know, cut and dry, buy a house, <laughs> and put money in it, sell it, make money. But you, it's so many different things, especially when you get to doing it. You know, it's, it's as frequently as as we have. Mm-hmm. You know, it's thing called capital gains tax. It's important. Uh, and what is capital gains tax? That's basically every house from this point on. I go into business with the IRS. Why? Because they get 40% of the profit from the sale of every house. It is the cost of doing business, and it needs to be factored on the front end. I always tell people, before you agree to any price, look at the total cost of the project, and that's included. And and when you say the total cost, you have, again, I'd rather pay 40% capital gains because that's, that showed that I'd made a profit. Right. So, but at the same time, you want to look at, again, don't look at what it costs you to buy it and how much, you know, your selling costs. You got different, you got carrying costs, you got uh, closing costs, you got Mm -hmm. what's carrying costs. Carrying costs is uh, what it takes from, you know, the time that you purchased it to the time that you sell, whether that's utilities, landscaping, uh, interest, all of these, you know, different things that people might not look at other than what you actually physically put into the house. A hundred percent. And I think to, um, the contingency budget. Yes. There's always going to be something that we didn't yeah. see there. There's, I can't think of a house where <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there yeah. wasn't, you know, an issue that we didn't think. And, of. And explain contingency. What is, uh, you know, just that, that budget line item that you, did not see at the beginning. What, so how much do you, what's the good? Well, I know that you tend to do about 10%. Right. I think that's a good number. Um, sometimes, you know, it ends up being more, but at least you have that 10%. Right. And um, yeah, and sometimes it's not as much. Right. You know, it's not, I don't like this. I think it's, it's true, you know, it's power mm-hmm. in your words. So mm-hmm. I don't like to say, well, you know, it's always something because guess what? Right. It's going to always be something. That's true. I like to just say, if something happens, any event that something happens, that it's going to, you know, it's you have that part covered. So, so you asked us what makes a guru. I think that what makes a guru is someone that has the experience and the knowledge and the wisdom that you so easily display. Okay. Even in things like that, even in things like, the power in your words. You said that, and I'm like, you're right. <laughs> let me let me watch my words. But I, I think that is so important um, to have positive expectations. I tell people, first of all, I have amazing days all the time, but I also start off saying today is going to be an amazing day. Um, every phone call that I answer, I answer with a smile on my face. Um, and I do that for two reasons. When you smile, people can hear your smile. Absolutely. And so they hear me smiling and happy. And most of the time they return that, no matter what they were calling about. Um, I believe that positivity is key. Okay. All right. Excellent. Excellent. So uh, real estate is great. As you, as you said, you enjoy doing it. Um, what else? You know, tell us. You know, it's interesting. You, you mentioned this Airbnb. Um, when we talked about an Airbnb, and, and you and I own this Airbnb together, when we talked about an Airbnb in Miller, that was a no-brainer. I absolutely love the beach. The water is my favorite place to be. Um, and I say Lake Michigan is the lake that doesn't know it's not an ocean. <laughs> it's like, you know. Um, and so I'm at the lake as often as possible. Uh, usually when I'm working in Gary, if I have 10 extra minutes, I'll stop at the lake just to look at it for a minute. I absolutely love the lake. And so, you know, other people who travel here understand that secret. I think as, as locals, sometimes we take the lake for granted. Um, but we live um, in an amazing place, and so many people travel here. This is absolutely a vacation destination. Because a lot of people, when I told them, you know, I'm a, I want to do an Airbnb mm-hmm. and, you know, Gary and Miller. First thing people say, people actually travel to Gary and Miller. But, you know, when it, you do your research, again, your due diligence, right. it, it proves that this is one of the – they rate different Airbnb areas. Mm-hmm. Uh, so 
this area is actually a A rated Airbnb area as an investor. Most people don't know that. Most people would never mm -hmm. understand that because they just think it's you know, Gary. It's Gary. Who? What is it to go and travel to do in Gary? But it's a high, you know, travel destination and great for Airbnb. Um, and again, this is all public information. Mm -hmm. uh, Airbnb. Shout out to Airbnb. Air DNA, uh, who actually shows all the information. Okay on uh, the data for the uh, Airbnbs. Mm -hmm. That's where you can get your data. And so shout out to them. But The first time I started doing research on an, um, Airbnb, Airbnbs in this area. What um, could you, I'm sorry not to cut you, go ahead. what could you expect to make off of Airbnb? I think it depends on the size of the Airbnb. Anytime we talk numbers, I say I think it's important to look at what you um, are doing. Are we talking about a one-bedroom apartment? Are we talking about this place that we're sitting in? sleeps what did we say 12 people and so this is going to cost a little more than something that sleeps two um okay. so i think that's important to look at we're also looking at is it peak season or you know is it the the downtime i will say that here in miller during peak season most of the airbnbs available sell out very very quickly and so again here in gary indiana you can expect your airbnb if you invest in one um to be booked all of peak season right and and a lot of people think that it it only again yes peak season is the summer because it's close to the beach mm -hmm. but people rent out airbnbs all around it's a trend Absolutely. that i don't think will be going away anytime soon people just want a change in the environment you know right. they're having some family in their house not can't accommodate them so they do air it's no different than you know say the rent a car business you know, you people be like, well, they only rent cars in the summer because people are traveling, family. No, I mean, people rent all year round. I mean, obviously, hotels been around mm -hmm. since, you know, beginning of time. It's no different than, you know, the Airbnbs or, you know, uh, that business. I'm more often than not staying in Airbnb when I'm traveling. Um, I prefer to stay in an Airbnb because I like the space. Um, I love to cook. And so I love having a kitchen available when I have the extra time. Um, I love being able to, like you said, relax and, and be with family and friends and, you know, hang out. And, um, yeah, that, that being said, the pandemic, I think, changed things as well. Uh, I know even me personally here now, um, it, it, COVID is kind of a, a touchy subject, <laughs> so I'm, I'm being careful. But I will say, while I've still traveled, I've been careful not leaving the country. Because here in the United States, for, for whatever you can say about the United States, I will say that our medical system is so much more stable than many places that I've been outside of this country. And plus, you don't want to go out of the country and get have to quarantine I mean, I wouldn't mind being stuck in, in Brazil for two weeks. Two extra weeks. <laughs> but no, yeah, seriously, that, that's a concern as well. But I'm thinking, I don't know what the, the medical facility is like in Mexico if right. I get sick there. I, actually, I do because I've been to the medical facility in Mexico, which is why I'm staying here. <laughs> so uh, that being said, I think that has made um, Airbnbs and local vacation rentals even a little bit more... Um, Popular that, and now that people are um, working from home still, how many people do you know that are still working from home? Yeah. I can work anywhere. You know, I actually have a friend now that's going to be here in two weeks. She works from home. And so, you know, she just sent me a, a note, hey, have my room ready because, you know, I'll be working from your house. Nice, nice. Yeah. Nice. So that's exciting. We talked about Airbnbs. We talked about investment. We talked about real estate. Uh, you know, just buying and purchasing a home. What advice would you just give someone if they're looking to buy a home and don't know? I literally had people call me. What's the first step and things that you know that oh that that's mm -hmm. common sense or common knowledge they should know. It's not to someone that has no experience mm -hmm. on buying a home. Maybe nobody. They're probably the first person in their family. To buy a home. What advice? Walk me through the steps of purchasing a home. 
I would say it's important to talk to a realtor as soon as possible, even if you think, hey, I'm not going to be ready for two months, two years, whatever the case is. Talk to a real estate agent, because like you said, a lot of times it is just getting over that fear of, you know, the anxiety of am I ready or what is this going to be like? Talk to someone who can walk you through everything. Um, I tell people very quickly, the only thing you need to purchase a home is a credit score of, let's say, 620, two years of stable income and um, a down payment. How much down payment? It's going to vary. Um, an FHA loan is 3.5%, and it goes up from there. There are programs available. So on a 100000 home, how much should I expect? If your home, there's not a lot of houses, honestly, that are 100000 I, mean, I know you're just using for, a real number. Yeah, for simplicity um, purposes. For simplicity's purposes. If if the house was 100000 3.5% is $3,500. But there, and there's a lot of factors there. There are programs available. There's um, family members or friends can gift you a portion of the money. You can, you know, look at different options. Awesome. So step one is getting a realtor. Now, so, should I get pre-approved? No. And, and because I think, number one, a good realtor is going to have relationships with good lenders. Um, I've, I've worked with a lot of lenders. Um, there are some that I highly recommend. Um, but I don't recommend the same lender every time. Uh, it depends Why on the that? circumstances. Different people's circumstances. For instance, um, if you are self-employed, um, you're usually going to have a much harder time at a traditional bank. So you tell them, when you say self-employed, explain that. If you work for yourself, if you're an entrepreneur, if you're if, a truck driver, for instance. A truck driver, anyone that, that gets doesn't, a... Yeah, because again... Yeah. It is common knowledge to both, obviously, you and myself, but, you know, yeah. self-employed is, but, you know, break it down. If you time. if you don't get a... Um, W-2. <laughs> I don't get one, so clearly I can't even think of what it's called. Right. <laughs> if, you, if you don't get a W-2, you are self-employed. Okay. So a hairstylist, they, you know... So if I'm a hairstylist or I'm a barber... Mm-hmm. Uh, I can still, you telling me I can still. You absolutely house. can. There are a lot of different programs available, but usually in those cases, and, and the reason I say go to a realtor first is because I've had those people tell me, well, no, the lender said I don't qualify. I can't. Okay, that lender said that. Right. But I have three other lenders that know exactly what to do. Right. But again, you got to be careful when you're self-employed because we're taught, a lot of times write off everything you possibly can think of yeah. and show these losses so you minimize your tax liability. But that'll minimize your tax liability. But Also again, your income. <laughs> you got to remember, self-employed saying you're working for yourself. So if you're saying you're not making no money, how mm-hmm. can a lender trust you to pay a loan back? You won't even qualify because as self-employed, you're showing you lose the money. Yeah. And, you know... That's a fantastic point um, to make. I, I know that I, when I've had people um, not be able to purchase a home, sometimes it's exactly that reason. Another thing that I think has stopped people is their debt-to-income ratio. Um, Explain that. How much um, your, your debt, what you owe, versus what you show coming in. And sometimes I've had people say, well, you know, I pay this much in rent. I know I can afford this much house, but... You know, the lender said I can only afford this much, and it's like, well, and you have all these times, other. When you say I pay this much, but you really, you know, live in check to check, or correct, you know, you, you like my grandmother used to say, I'm robbing Peter to pay Paul. Right. Uh, you you really not able to mm-hmm. do that because you all it takes is for you to miss a week of work, and now you're behind on all your bills. So lenders look at that; they look at okay. Do you have enough to be able to save, whether you are or aren't saving that money, but do you have that ability? Because you're thinking, well, I've been paying this much. I've never been laid on my, but again, one little. Yeah, their job is to assess risk. And and so how risky are you? Right. That definitely makes sense. I, um, you know, I always tell people because oftentimes, like I said, my, my clients become like 
friends and family, and, and the first thing they do is fuss. This lender asked me for this, this, and this. And I say, I would too if you asked me for $300,000 yeah. and I just right. met and, you. And, and again, <laughs> I'm glad that you mentioned that, uh, you know, the three hundred. How do I know how much I can afford? For example, if I make $30,000 a year, mm-hmm. can I afford to buy a house? So your debt to income is the key to that answer. Not It is how much you make, but also how much do you already owe? How much do you have? How much debt do you have? Um, you know, I, I often... Could you give... I mean, so debt I, to income, if you take home or you make a thousand dollars a month uh-huh. and you have bills that equal five hundred six hundred dollars a month then you had a 60 percent <laughs> debt to income <laughs> ratio because 60 percent of what you make is right is is taken up by your bills so and, and you probably won't qualify for that but a lot of times we don't even have the i mean I know people in their 30s mm-hmm. say, I don't, you know, people tell me I shouldn't have a credit card or I don't own a credit card. I'm like, how could you expect somebody to lend you a couple hundred thousand dollars for a house when you, you don't have never any established record of credit? You know, I tell people, um, one of my good friends is a, a credit specialist and we do a lot of these seminars together. And one thing I say is, Cre- your credit oh, wait a score. You, you said you're not comfortable with the, with the the pie, with you doing seminars. And it's you, the recording. Okay. It's okay. the it's the camera. I'm I'm camera shy. Okay. I don't even pay attention. Yeah. yeah. I don't even know it's here. But yeah. yeah, I'm just having a conversation. I yeah. I like people. I like to talk. All of that is fine. I'm always happy to one on one. You can grab me anywhere, and I'll, you know, answer all the questions. It's just the camera. Okay. Yeah. But but that being said, I tell people your credit score is literally like your reputation. And so, you know, credit is a a game to a point. You have to make sure you get enough out there that that they know what you're about and that it looks good. Okay. so if 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 I make a hundred, I mean, if I make twenty five thousand a year, I can still buy a house if I don't have no credit cards. No. (laughs) <laughs> Neither, no, if you make 20, well, we know you, you were talking to us about inflation. I don't think that 25,000 a year is going to go very far in, in 2021 at all. So you probably are not at a place yet where you can afford a house. But the other thing is, I don't like to just say a, a blanket no. Remember, I said I'm a problem solver. Right. And so let's see what we can work out. I, I have a story of a couple who... Um, we were selling their house and buying another house. He sent me a house and he said, this is really our dream house, but we can't afford it. I looked at it, did some calculations, realized it was in a county where there were less taxes. And so I knew that their um, monthly payment was going to be much lower than what the lender had already calculated. Um, I also looked at what we were making from the sale of their house and the fact that initially they were planning on just putting all of that money down because what else were they going to do with it? And um, I called my lender. We put together a plan and realized that if we paid off a lot of the debt that they had, their debt to income ratio would go down. They would qualify for more. And between that and the taxes, and this house was significantly higher than what we were looking at. I'm talking a hundred thousand more. Wow. They were able to get the house. Awesome, awesome. And you figured that out and you, they just sent you that on a humbug. Like, yeah, he was one just, day I want this house and you was like, yeah, we can make this happen for you. And and we made it hand, down to, and, and again, that's why I love what I do. The, this particular couple um, had two dogs. They were a, a dog family. They loved their, their dogs. And, and it was down to literally the house had, um, the people that had lived in it previously had put the, um, I don't know what it's called, but the black um, fencing, like at a dog park, they had a huge side yard. And so literally they moved into a house with a a private dog park for their dogs. Exactly. Wow. Yeah. Awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. So again, um, you know, you able to get people, uh, first time home buyers, Mm -hmm. you work with investors, um, you you got a lot of family and friends uh, in the real estate. Can you see yourself doing anything else? Not at all. Not, not at all. And I mean, will I, I should not say that. 
I will always be doing another thing. Like you said, I work very well under pressure. I love being productive with my time. I never time. said I work well under pressure. Well, you said the stress. It keeps you going. The adrenaline, the stress, okay. the, the same. The stress don't keep me going. The adrenaline <laughs> keeps me going. It all comes uh, together, the, though. The, it's the, a package. The stress have me, no, I, I'm, that stress has me ready to walk away sometimes. But, and then you, you come know. back the next day. Yeah. I just I ain't say how long I walk away. I just say <laughs> walk away sometimes, but no. But that's healthy, and that's important too. I think part of being able to be successful at anything is knowing when you need to take a break and say, okay, let me pause on this. You know, it, I always say I make the best decisions when I'm being patient and calm, and so I try to stay calm in, in all circumstances so that I can use wisdom and not make rash decisions and that's important when you get to the point where where you're over you know stress yeah. it's hard to make a decision but um so yeah that being said I'll always add something else onto my plate um I you know it's important to diversify and I like doing a, a multitude of things but I will never stop doing real estate okay yeah I, I again I did real estate so long I don't know what else you know again when it was the uh, crisis in 08 for a couple of years, I stopped. Yeah. But like any anything else that you just love, you you go you find a way to get back in it and you know get going at it. And I unfortunately is a blessing and a curse mm -hmm. because I only got one speed. So the blessing is I only got one speed, but the curse is I only got one speed. So I, I don't know how to slow down and take. It's either all in or you know nothing. I 100% understand. When I go on vacation with my girlfriends, they know that, you know, first thing in the morning, I'm going to be up working, you know. Right. And and not because I have to. Not You know, you give me time off. Yeah. <laughs> not but, much, but I, I, I give you time off. Well, you know, you let me take two days about two months ago. <laughs> but, no, I, you know, I do take time off, and, and I think life balance is important, too. Um, I, I like to spend a lot of time with my kids and, you know, but – the other thing is I also think it's important to model a good work ethic and to teach your kids, you know, that work is important. And real estate is definitely something that um, I have involved my children in from the beginning. Um, I, I always tell the story that my when I first started um, in real estate, my uh, daughter had just started kindergarten and my son was three years old. And um, my dad used to watch him a lot, but occasionally if it was just like one house or two, I would just take him with me. And um, JJ absolutely sold the house. He was three and a half years old, and I had probably showed. So he sold, did he get a commission? He gets all my money. <laughs> okay. All of it. <laughs> so three and a half, he sold the house. Well, um, he, I had showed this particular gentleman house after house. And like I said, I, I try to be productive with my time. I try to understand, um, by asking questions, what it is that my clients need, as well as kind of reading between the lines and paying attention, setting right expectations. But this particular gentleman, I felt like I was delivering every time I kept waiting. I, I tell people my favorite moment is that moment where I walk in and I know it's the right house and I, and you see it, right. you know? Um, but this particular gentleman, <laughs> we walked in the houses and I'm like, this is it. And, and he didn't like any of them. He kept saying, it's just something not right. It's just something not right. So, okay. We kept looking at houses and on this particular day, it was snowing outside. There was a lot of snow on the ground and, um, we pulled up to the house. I got out of the car, went to get my son out of the car before I could even open the door. He jumped out of the car himself grabbed a snowball and hit the man with the snowball. Uh. <laughs> I was literally mortified. Wow. I, anyone that knows me knows that I turn red very easily. I can be a little prim and proper at times. And so I'm like ready to profusely apologize to this gentleman. And I'm, I'm screaming <laughs> like, JJ, don't. The man picks up a snowball and, hit. and hits JJ. Wow. They're running through these people's yard, having a snowball fight at this point. So now, again, I'm prim and proper. So I'm thinking, you're tearing up these people's yard. Right. You know, they're pretty, the snow is not, you know, all the things. And so now I'm telling both the adult and the three and a half year old to stop. He laughs and he says, this is the house I'm buying. Wow. I said, you haven't even seen the inside of the house. First of all, <laughs> you, right. it has to be all the things you want. And, right. and you know. 
Uh, we came all the way out here. He says, this is the house I'm buying. We walk in. This is the house. We walk through the whole house. And the whole time he says, this is absolutely the house. Um, and that's the house he bought. I don't buy houses that easy. That's not I true. <laughs> that's not true? No, for you, I think, and it, it is based on if the deal makes sense. Um, and you found lots of different ways to make the deal make sense. So a lot of deals do make sense for you. But, um, yeah, you, you do buy houses very easily as long as it makes sense. As long as it makes sense. Yeah, I don't, I don't, a lot of people get caught up in the, you know, how it looks or the potential mm -hmm. or, you know, and I hate to say this, but for me, it got to, it got to make money. If it don't make money, it don't it, make then sense. Then it don't make sense. Again, yeah. I love what I do, mm -hmm. but at the same time, I don't want to do it just, you know. Yeah, you can't look at how the house looks. I know that uh, one of the wholesalers that we work with, um, I think with his excitement, he's always looking for my cues of whether or not we're going to buy the house. And he'll always ask me, he, he says, you're smiling. Do you like the house? And I say, I smile every day. I, right. I like to smile. I'm a happy person. And I like all the houses. <laughs> I like houses. That's why I do what I do. But whether or not we buy it is, is strictly based on does it make sense? Not do I like the house? You know, there have been some houses that I really like that we didn't buy. You know. Why, why didn't we buy? They probably... Um, the, the deal didn't make sense. The person wanted more than, okay. or or the repairs exceeded the value we would have made. Okay. Yeah, and again, it's all about the numbers. You you gotta under you know, and again, thankfully I was blessed. You know, I'm a numbers guy, so thankfully I was blessed with numbers and understanding numbers, and sometimes getting numbers to make they make or make sense when they initially don't make sense. But again, understanding the numbers is definitely the key to real estate investing. And if you don't One of the keys, if um, you don't understand numbers, finding a partner that that does. I think that's so key and I will, you know, um I affectionately will call you the mathematician out again. You know that. And and you're absolutely you're great with numbers. They you it's not a, a matter of just understanding that 2 plus 2 is 4. That's the easy part, but it's really understanding how numbers work and how to to make a deal work and also how finances work. Like you right. said, factoring in all the right costs, that, that's very important. Oftentimes, I'll, I'll see you kind of going through a, a deal and figuring out how we can structure it to make it work. And it always reminds me of, um, I guess there's a couple of different movies where you see the guy at the chalkboard and, yeah. <laughs> you know, yes. they're, shh, shh, right. okay, erase it, try it again, put this over here, carry the two. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but yeah, so again, and a lot of it just going to come with experience, right? You mm -hmm. can't just say, you know, I want to go and I want to, do this and think you go just be some quote unquote guru overnight. It, it, it has to come with some bumps, some bruises, some ups, some losses. And experience is going to cost one way or the other. But like you said, I just want to go back to you can get the experience yourself and that, you know, there's something to be said for that, or you can pay for someone else's experience. Right. And, and I like to say um, a lot of times, you know, people think, well, you know, I'll put this out and I'll make money. All I got to do is read. I like to tell people it's not as seen on TV, right? <laughs> like you think it's going to, you, you're going to make money. But again, even now to this day, now I'm, I have over a thousand flips under my belt, but mm -hmm. it's, it's sometimes that, you know, some things I didn't factor in um, and it just didn't go according to plan. It don't, you know, I remember I used to, I grew up watching A Team, and it was like, you know, at the <laughs> end, you know, he was like, I love when a plan comes together. Yeah. It don't always come according to plan. Yeah. So sometimes you got to maneuver throughout the, the stages and, you know, make it, you know, sometimes you got to make it happen when there's nothing. You know, I read somewhere where it says, your success will depend on your ability to solve problems. That's and, true. And real estate is a problem. All so often. Absolutely. Absolutely. But, again, I think that's the fun part. That's the fun part. Yeah, that's the fun part is solving the problems, figuring stuff out. And, and if it was that easy. Everybody would do it. <laughs> yeah, so, no, it, it's definitely, um, again, it's, it's, it's money, a lot of money mm -hmm. to be made. But, definitely. again, it's a lot of money to be lost. If you don't know what you're doing, um, I got hoard for every Great story. I got a horror story to go along with it. Mm -hmm. I'll, I, again, I'll buy a house, and again, it was literally Murphy's Law. 
mm-hmm. everything that could go wrong with that house did go wrong. I remember a couple of those uh, days. I, I Those were a little stressful. Those were a lot stressful. And, you know, again, those are days you're like, did I really choose? Is this really what I chose? But, again, you, you got to fight through it and just yeah. you know like anything else, you know. Again, if it was easy, everybody would do it. But uh, it's going to be some times where it's going to be fun, and there's going to be some times where it's not going to be as fun. And I, I think that you have to decide when you are investing um, if you're okay with um, your returns coming at a later date. You know, if you're, do you want, you know, as we talk, and I, I really didn't want to go here because there's so much to be said, but flipping is not the only way to invest. Obviously, you hold most of the properties that you have. Um, there are times that you know that you're not going to make any money on month three or four or six based on on your budget that it's going to take a little bit of time you know this is not a there is a lot of money to be made but it's going to take some time right exactly like you you know you you mentioned that i hold a lot of my uh properties i I use a strategy what they refer in the industry as the birth strategy Mm -hmm. uh that's b r r r r which is you buy the property you renovate the property Mm-hmm. You rent a property, you refinance the property, meaning you uh, get your original investment out, mm-hmm. and in some cases you'll get extra, and mm-hmm. then you repeat that strategy over and over. And probably 75% of the properties that um, we acquire we use that strategy just because, again, I don't want to do this for all forever, but if you – Buying and flipping, once you make that money, you yeah. got to keep chasing the money. Right. But with the birth strategy, if you acquire enough property, you know, say 100 doors, you're making, you know, $400 a door. I like to have my, you know, cat positive cash flow between three to $600, which means on average right around four $400. four fifty. So yeah. that means at 100 doors, you can make... Uh, four hundred and you know forty five thousand dollars a year on a hundred doors on ten doors you have forty five hundred dollars a month. Um, That's one, a lot of money. One <laughs> one person can probably manage ten doors, right. but obviously uh, when you talk in a hundred two hundred doors, mm-hmm. you need a team of people. Uh, you need a team of uh, contractors. You need management. You know, I also have my real estate uh, uh, broker sales license Mm -hmm. to manage my own properties. You go probably need property managers. You go need a team of, to help you out. That's very, very, very important. I think that's one of the things I learned. Um, And I've worked with a few different investors. I've had experience, you know, going through transactions with different investors and never wanted to invest myself previously. Um, once I, I met you and started working with you, it, it made sense to invest. I felt like you had a formula that worked. Um, but also a lot of the reasons that I had watched other people lose a lot of money and fail, it seemed like you had a solution for. Right. And so one of them being that you have a team. You can't be an island. You can't expect to do it all by yourself. You have to have support, and you have to have the right people available. I, I, you know, I would never – this is me – I guess people have found some success in this, but I would not invest planning to do all of the work myself and to, you know, take care of everything on my own because I I just feel like there's going to be something you don't know how to do or didn't factor in, and then what? And if that is what stops your project, now you spent a lot of money without making any money. Right. And like you said, a lot of people are like, well, do you do your work yourself? Do you know how to? Yes, I know how to do a lot of stuff. My first rehab um, I did myself. I took mm-hmm. money out of my 401k, mm-hmm. um, and you can you can actually, uh, you know. But again, take I'm not an accountant. I don't play one on TV. <laughs> but uh, you can take money out of 401k, put an investment mm-hmm. um, investment property. Don't have any penalties as long as it's used for an investment property. Right. Um, that's what I did. My first property made money, refinanced. Pull that money out, put it back into your 401k, and but again, seek you know 
And you also mentioned something. At, can you? Do you know how to do the things? Yeah, there's some things that you know how to do. But one thing you've said to me that I've absolutely taken a heed is, is that the best use of your time? Is that, you know, the other day, just having fun with a friend, um, I took the uh, nail gun and, and nailed some, some baseboards to the wall. Was it fun? Yes. Did I do okay at it? Can I say I know how? Yes. Is that the best use of my time? Not so, even a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> um, again, I used to do I, my first rehab. I did all the work. Uh, Jay Z, one of my favorite songs is "Lost One" by Jay Z, and he, you know, one of the verses is like, you know, uh, people want to stick into their day role, so we had to part ways, like being in J Lo. But again, you know, I I know my day role. Yeah, uh, my day role is not a carpenter. You, you know have to I'm play saying? your day role, but you know, Ben and J Lo are back together. But they parted ways. <laughs> Oh, okay. at, you okay. know, they, you're right, they back together, <laughs> but, you know, I'm sure they're going to play their day role now, so. Uh, and understanding so, is a beautiful thing. Yeah, so absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. So, again, just knowing what you're good at, uh, utilizing your skills, uh, making sure you, you, you get a mentor, teaming up with the right people, mm -hmm. uh, having the right people, the resources, you know, you got to have a good accountant. Oh, yeah. You got to have, you know, a good a lender that you're working with. Um, again, you can get private money mm -hmm. to invest. You don't necessarily have to go to a hard money. Right. Private money is when you, a friend, mm -hmm. you know, has X amount of dollars and looking to invest, but they don't want to deal with the real estate. They don't want to deal with the flip, but you got the knowledge. If you can sell them on the fact that you know what you're doing, you can get them to fund your project. And on um, that note, that's another way for someone else to get involved with real estate without directly getting involved. I've had people come to me and say exactly that. Can I give you this sum of money and this is the return I want and just call me when my money's ready? Right. And sure. Right. Exactly. And those are always options. But again, mm -hmm. you want to make sure you you because, you know, <laughs> uh, again, I always reference songs and movies all the time, uh, you know. People go, won't they? Money, rain, sleet, hell, stone. So if you ain't got the clientele, say right. no. You know what I'm saying? I abbreviated it and put it in my own words. But, you know, if you take somebody money, understand they go, won't they? Money, rain, right. sleet, hell, snow. So, you know, definitely, I think we, uh, on this first episode, we were able to cover a lot when it came to real estate investing. You know, definitely managing your expectations and understand what you're getting into. Just don't jump into it. For sure. Uh, hopefully our, you know, our guests, our listeners out there was able to take, can take something. We gave out a few gems. Uh, hopefully they, yeah. they was they able to, you know, take something and, and gain something from it. You know, again, I want to thank Christine Lee, our realtor of today's episode, uh, first podcast for joining us and looking forward to uh, the continued success of you and working with you. Uh, so take yeah. it home. Thank you for having me. Um, it, it's always great to sit down and talk to you. You always have plenty of wisdom to share. And so um, it's, I think it's amazing that you're going to be doing this. I look forward to the additional podcast. Um, and I'm always happy to answer questions and help. If you want to uh, reach out to me, you can reach out on Instagram, Christina Lee Realtor. It's an open page. And uh, just send me a message. Awesome. And again, you can find me at... Uh, Mr. Flip the Hood on Instagram. Mm -hmm. um, again, follow me. I'll be giving out many gems. Uh, you can go along with the ride on the different uh, houses we're working on uh, from beginning to end and um, learn more, hopefully. And look, stay tuned for the next episode, okay. too. We'll be coming to you weekly. Uh, every week we'll be doing a podcast, um, just giving out, giving out that knowledge and uh, having different guests uh, from – you know, real estate to uh, different, different facets. So looking forward to it. And thank you again. Absolutely. Bye. Thanks.